Well, we are so glad you're here tonight for the first week of our series called and chosen. Tonight we're going to be talking about being called by God. God has called each of us to fulfill a specific destiny in him. And the word call means to be summoned by another, to be chosen, to be elected, to be appointed, to assembly. It means that you have been sanctified and you have been set apart for God's use. It means that God has hand selected you above all others. He singled you out. You are his preferred choice. And you are of the finest quality because you're created in the image of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. When Peter began his writing in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 2, 10, he was writing to the five churches in Asia Minor. And he was writing to both the Jews and to the Gentiles. He reminded them that before God called them, before God selected them, before God hand chose them, that they were not a people. But because of the saving blood of Jesus Christ, God brought them into a relationship with himself. And he said to them, since you have been called, there are certain things you need to do to keep this relationship with God going in the right direction. Number one, you are to desire a relationship with God greater than all other relationships. You are to desire the sincere milk of the word of God. That means that you and I should daily make sure we spend time in the word of God. Just as you do take in daily food, Peter was telling them that God wants them to ingest the word as if they were taking daily nourishment. And then the scripture goes on to say that as the word began to take root in their hearts, that they were to mature and to grow up spiritually in the things of the Lord. They were not to pretend to be good, but to be good, putting away the things that would keep them from growing in grace. And then they were to have a deep hunger for the things of God. I started with that passage of scripture because as we begin to talk about what it means to be called and chosen by God for destiny, we need to know that there's some foundational things that God wants us to do. And part of the foundation is that he desires that you get into the pages of the word so he can tell you who you are and what he's destined you for. In Matthew chapter 22, verse 14, the scripture says, many are called. So what that means is that God's call goes out to all of humanity. Every single person that God created receive a call from God. He calls us to share the riches of his kingdom. He calls us while we were still enemies of his and separated from him. While we were still separated because of what Adam and Eve did in the Garden of Eden, God was still thinking about us. So when they fell from grace, when they, when they stepped away from God's plans and his purposes for us, God already had a plan to redeem us. And so God, I call it the heavens board meeting. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit got together and devised a way to redeem us back into the right relationship with himself. So before they fell, God had made provision for our redemption. So the Bible says that many are called, and it goes on to say few are chosen. But we'll deal with that part in next week's lesson. Many people hear the call of God. Because the scripture says, my sheep hears my voice, and a stranger's voice they will not follow. Many people hear the call of God, but they choose to ignore it. The reason why they ignore his call, number one is, they don't feel qualified. I am here to tell you tonight, God doesn't call you because you're qualified. God calls you because he's placed a destiny in your life that you have not yet tapped into, and because he knows what he's put there, he's calling you to help you to fulfill this destiny. Some people remember the sins of their past, and the enemy is so crafty, he keeps us mindful of what we have done. So when we hear the voice of God, and God says, I'm calling you, into this relationship, I'm calling you for destiny and a plan that I have for you, most of us won't respond because the enemy said, come on, could God really use you? You remember what you did 10 years ago? And so God is calling and we're saying no to his call 
Because the enemy is making us feel that we're not worthy to be called into the presence of a holy God. And so he calls and we say, no, I'm not qualified. I'm not good enough. My background is not the right background. Can I tell you tonight that there is not one perfect person in the Bible? If God was looking for perfection, he would never have found it. Because King David, a man of, man of the God's own heart, was a murderer, was an adulterer. Moses was disobedient. So God is not looking for perfect people. He's looking for people that when he calls them, they will say, here am I, Lord, send me. Because if all of us were to review our lives and review our background, and if heaven were to roll back and show some of the stuff we have done, we would never uncover our faces. That's why I'm glad to declare to you tonight that when we get before God, he's not going to scroll our sins for the world to see, he's just going to ask you, what did you do with the life I gave you after I called you to fulfill a purpose? So God is not looking for perfect people. He's not looking for people with perfect backgrounds. God is looking for people whose hearts are open to be used by him. So that's why his call goes out to all mankind. So when God calls you, he's calling you because he placed a dream and a desire in your heart that only you can fulfill. And so throughout the Bible, God has called great men and women. And he called them by putting dreams and visions in their hearts. God took his dreams and his visions for your life and he planted them deeply into the soils of your heart. He calls us so that he can begin the process of making us into his image and into his likeness. He desires to conform us to the image of his son. And finally, he calls you because he wants a family. Just as you and I enjoy family life on earth, guess what? We got it from God. So he calls us because he wants a family. He wanted you and I as a part of his family. And that is the reason why he has called us. He's called us to be a part of his family. 